what is up my youtube family welcome back to my channel if this is your first time here then it's just welcome to my channel now welcome back go ahead and hit the subscribe button because you will not be disappointed unless of course your taste level is lacking and if that's the case then honestly i don't know what to tell you girl that's a struggle i can't relate to i'm so happy to be back on the channel with another fact of fiction y'all know this is my favorite series on the channel and if you're unfamiliar with what it is it is the same idea as the old show beyond belief factor fiction where you see or hear a, a series of stories some of which are true events and some of the stories are completely made up it's up to you to decide or try to figure out which ones are the fake ones and which ones are the real ones in the end of course i will tell you which stories were true and which ones were not as well as the real names and places if they were switched i loved this show back in the day it's one of my favorite childhood memories watching it on friday evenings with my auntie Latanya, shout out to you. When she got off work, we would watch it together and we would silently guess which ones were true, which ones were not, and then see who got the most right at the end. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and get into today's stories. And recently I started doing themes. When I first started it, the stories would not necessarily relate to each other, but I kind of been feeling the theme thing lately, like how all of them were once unsolved mysteries and then, child, I'm wrong with the other categories, right? but you know. Today we are talking about body parts. That is the common thread amongst the stories. Now, if you don't know, as I did not, there is no federal law preventing the ownership of body parts that are detached from the person unless they are Native American. The Native American Graves Protection and Reparation Act makes it illegal to own or trade Native American remains. Other than that, it's only a few states in the U.S. that restrict owning or selling human body parts. Like Louisiana, for example, enacted a ban in 2016 on private ownership of human remains with only a couple of exceptions. And there are other states that also have a law similar to Louisiana where they're like, girl, no, which I found was very interesting. I thought you just, girl, if it comes off, you, nobody can have it. It's biohazard material and it is then taken somewhere else. Now, without further ado, let's get into story number one. One summer in 2007, a bargain hunter by the name of Sean Walker goes to an auction where he purchases a barbecue smoker. Now, after taking it home, getting ready to fire it up and put his meat inside, he opens the top of the smoker to find a gruesome surprise, a mummified human leg. Now, of course, in addition to shock, maybe a pinch of horror, this discovery brings about a lot of questions. Whose leg is this? Why is it mummified and why is it in a barbecue smoker? Sean first tells his mom and her boyfriend about the discovery and they are shocked as well. He then calls the police and they come out and speak with him and then they attempt to confiscate the leg. But Sean is like, wait, hold up. I did pay for this. Now, if it is not a part of a crime, investigation not being put into a ziplock bag as evidence then i want this leg it's mine and that sounds like a very strange request and is but john here has a grand idea for this here mummified leg he figured if the police officers and his mother and his his mother's boyfriend were this interested in this leg then a lot more people might be as well so he props the leg up inside of the smoker with the top up as like a display and places it inside of a shed then charges people to come see it before long this is a whole little business like a little side of the road tourist attraction kind of thing not only does he have this foot on display for about $10? He has named himself the footman and is selling mummified leg merchandise. Now, of course, it is not long before he garners a lot of attention, a lot of media coverage, and people start coming from all over to see this leg. And Sean is loving the money and the attention that having this leg is bringing in, but... His fame and fortune are threatened when a man by the name of James Wheeler shows up out of nowhere claiming that this is his leg 
and he wants his leg back. James had unfortunately been involved in a plane crash just three years prior that he luckily survived. And unfortunately, his father was also on the plane, had not. And the plane wasn't like a commercial flight. It was a private 1958 one engine plane owned by James's father. And in addition to the father-son duo, there were two other individuals who were also on the plane who also survived, but just suffered major injuries. And of course, James's injuries lead him him to have his leg amputated. While there, he had made a request, a very peculiar one, if I may say so. He wanted to keep his leg. He wanted to take his little leg home when they removed it as a memorial item. More surprisingly than his request to keep it, the hospital actually allows it. For whatever reason, he felt like or believed that he would just be given the bones, like they would take the tendons and the muscles and all of that off. But no, an entire embalmed leg is delivered right to his front door girl like DoorDash tendons, muscles, skin, and all. Now, at this point, because he wasn't expecting all of this, he is unsure where would be a good place to keep it. He figured it would need freezing, right? Because it's technically meat. So he calls a friend who works at a very popular fast food restaurant and asks her to temporarily store it inside of the restaurant's freezer, which she agrees to. However, when the manager comes in for their shift, and they see this leg inside of the restaurant deep freezer, they immediately tell the employee, it has to go, get rid of it. So she calls James, tells him to come pick up this leg, okay? Before it gets me fired. He pulls into the drive-thru, gets the leg through the window and takes it back home to try to find something else to do with it. He removes the thin screen that's like on the outside of windows and on some doors. He takes those off of his home, wraps the leg really tightly, bastes this leg with embalming fluid and leaves it out in the tree in his backyard to dry out for the next six months, hence it becoming mummified. After that process was complete, he had placed it inside of a barbecue smoker grill, and he had put it there because he was putting his smoker inside of a storage unit, along with some of his other personal items. And it stays there for a couple of months, but he doesn't keep up the payments. And so the contents of his storage unit go up for auction, hence landing into Sean's possession, who is now showcasing it and making money. And of course, right when the story gets really messy and this man has popped up wanting his leg back, the media, child, they are on it like flies on poop. And because Sean does not want to give the leg back, the two men get into a custody battle over this leg. Sean argues that although it's not his original leg, like it didn't come off of his body, he still has ownership rights over this leg and feels that under the finder's keeper's law, he has an argument and he is willing to take it to court. Now, the finder's keeper law states that when property is lost and another person finds it, the finder can lawfully keep the item if they've made reasonable attempts to reach the original owner. And after 10 days, it is presumed abandoned and can be then lawfully owned by the finder. Now, James feels just as strongly as Sean about owning this leg, okay? He says, this is ridiculous. This is literally my leg. I grew it, baby. It came off of me. Like the leg, in addition to being a part of him, signified or meant something to him. It has sentimental value because it was lost in the accident that he had lost his father in. He actually had intentions of building a memorial for his father using the leg. And he also has a problem with this man making money off of his leg that he is not getting a part of. The two men go to court to battle it out over ownership of the leg. Ultimately, the court rules in favor of James, the original leg owner, and they ordered that his leg be returned to him immediately. And Sean could have kept the leg under the finder's keeper's law, actually, had the court felt like he made reasonable attempts. But that was the reason why they ruled in favor of James, because they felt like reasonable attempts were not made, which is wild. The audacity of this man to try to keep somebody else's leg. I would want my leg back too. I feel like at that point, just give the man his leg back. And if you feel this strongly about your little business, cut your leg off. How about that? On to story number three. In 2011, Katie finds that her pinky toe on her right foot is going numb. And the numbness is progressively 
becoming worse as the days go on. So, of course, she goes to the doctor. But even after several trips to the doctor, they are unable to determine what is causing this numbness. Meanwhile, the numbness eventually spreads and progresses into actual pain. Finally, after months of trying to figure out what is medically wrong with her, she gets the terrible news that she has cancer in her leg and in her foot. She begins treatment, but eventually her oncologist suggests that they amputate it. And instead of being super distraught or, you know, combative, Katie responds in a way that takes the doctor aback. She asks, if you guys cut my leg off, can I keep it? And it is quite uncommon for people to make these requests. Granted, like I said, depending on the state you're in, most likely you're within your rights to keep it because it is considered to technically be your personal property, whether it's attached to you or not. Now, at first, the doctor chuckles thinking that Katie is kidding. But Katie's like, no, I really want my leg when you guys are done. Like, it's mine. And because she does not have a communicable disease, her tissue has no virus or any harmful bacteria, they approve her to keep her leg after it is removed and she is sent on her merry way. The particular hospital that she is at, they already had a policy and a release form for this. Granted, it's not something that happens that often. She's just advised that she needs to either keep it frozen or properly preserved served before being given to her and she would have to sign the release paper saying that she would properly store it. Her surgery goes well and afterward they tell her that once her leg is properly treated with chemicals it would be shipped to her. So a month or so after she returns home her leg shows up but like the guy in the previous story she expected it to just be bones. She didn't expect the entire leg baby hair and all, toenails, toenail polish. So she does a little research and finds a company that actually cleans human remains and she contacts them to take her meat off the bone. They deflesh her leg, dry it out, and then put it in a tank with flesh-eating beetles for them to then make sure that the bones are clean. All of her bones are then whitened and they string them together to try to put them back in the form of a skeletal leg. Kind of how the human skeleton is in like an anatomy or biology class. Just like that. The process costs her $650 and takes four months to complete. But once it's done, she's very happy with the outcome. She creates a little Instagram account for her, her bone, bony leg. And travels, enjoys life, taking cool pictures with her leg and posting them online. I don't think I have it in me, girl. I think I would be freaked out by my leg in a bag. It's Katie here and her little leg basically became the next Tom Hanks and Wilson. It's a little buddy. She loves her leg and they have a good time. On to story number three. A doctor studying over in Asia who has spent the bulk of his career mainly focusing on syphilis becomes intrigued and borderline obsessed with tattoos on human flesh when he discovers that tattoo ink in the skin heals skin lesions caused by the disease syphilis. And he is so interested in this that he decides to switch his medical focus completely. He falls deep down the rabbit hole of tattoo skin and particularly takes an interest in Japanese art pieces and full body pieces. Dr. Jung begins collecting tattoo skin from morgues from individuals who have opted to donate their skin after death for research purposes. But these opportunities to collect are not as plentiful as Dr. Jung would like them to be. So he begins doing a little groundwork, getting out there searching for people who are willing to donate their skin to him for his research and even funds tattoos for people who want them and would be willing to donate. However, they just couldn't afford the pieces. But of course, before he swipes that car, and he has them sign across the dotted line that once you go, this tattoo, this portion of your body is mine. Carefully removing the skin from each of his donors, he scrapes away all of the membranes, nerves, or tissue that might still be attached to it. Very careful not to disrupt the art. And he uses two different methods to 
preserve his hides, which is what he calls them. And I have like, if you have a dog, I'm sure you're familiar with like beef hide, pork hide. It's really just dehydrated animal skin. Anything smaller, he calls a hide. And larger pieces that could be worn, he calls a bodysuit. Like if someone had a whole torso tat or like a whole arm sleeve, that would be considered a bodysuit. After cleaning them up, he would then either stretch them out to be dried or he would preserve them by submerging them in a liquid. Dr. Jung travels all over the world collecting specimens or hides, hosting events, private events, of course, where he showcases all of his pieces. And it is not long before his collection grows to over 2,000 different tattoos. In his collection, he has everything. Like he has pieces that are super detailed, pieces that are not very detailed. There are some pieces that he has simply because he really admires the work of the artist. Like if there was a tattoo artist whose work he really, really liked, he would fund someone getting a tattoo by this artist just so he could have this piece eventually in his collection as a dried up piece of human skin, basically. Now, of course, because this is a quite interesting and different thing to do, his work garners a lot of media attention and a lot of people have mixed feelings about it. Some people are completely disgusted. They find it to be repulsive and just nasty. While others see the beauty that Dr. Jung sees, there were a lot of people who shared his passion for the art or tattoos and they just really respected his appreciation for these people's tattoos and how he was able to preserve them even after the person is gone. They felt like it was amazing that he was preserving these memories of the individuals that they were once a part of. He has since passed away and unfortunately most of his work or his collection has been either lost, stolen, or destroyed over time. And today just 105 pieces remain. And these pieces are actually on display at the Medical Pathology Museum of Tokyo University, but it is not on display for the public. However, if this is a true story, you probably can find photos online. Now, let's see how you did. Moment of truth. For story number one, Sean Williams versus James Walker and the custody battle over James's leg. If you guessed that this story was true, you would be correct. This actually happened in, I believe, North Carolina. Sean Walker, in my story, his real name is Shannon. I think it's pronounced Wisnet. And the original leg owner is John Wood. If you are interested in this mess, there is an actual documentary called Finders Keepers about it, but you have to pay for it to watch it. Um, I caught some clips on the YouTube and they also appeared on Judge Mathis fighting over this leg. That was a mess. Complete foolery if you're interested in seeing it. Very wild scenario. Um, I would want my leg back, like I said. You have to come up off of the leg or sign over about 60% of his business to me. But that's the only compromise mama is willing to make, okay? That's my leg. Now, as for story number two, Miss Katie, who had her leg removed and decided to keep it and then have it made into a little skeletal leg. If you guess that this actually happened and that it's a woman out here taking photos with a real skeleton leg that used to be attached to her, you would actually be right. Her real name is Christy Loyal and the Instagram name, I mean, Instagram page for the leg is actually One Foot Wonder. I looked at the pictures it's actually kind of funny it doesn't even look real it looks like she's carrying around like the fake skeleton leg from halloween but yeah i say check it out send her some love girl like a couple of her pictures i guess depending on you know your taste or whatever is subjective of course but to me i think it's kind of it's kind of funny it's kind of cool like i feel like it's a great um counter to having your leg removed like that sucks but look what you got now like this cool little skeletal leg like i might as well make fun with it you know is what i guess i'm trying to say and last but not least story number three about dr jung who traveled around collecting people's tattoos and preserving them for all of eternity if you guessed that this story was false and that it didn't actually happen you would 
be incorrect. This story was true as well. This was the first. All of them were true. Now, I will put his name on the screen, honey, but I will not butcher it. Not today. Y'all won't get me. Mm -mm, not in the comments, girl. Won't get me. He was from Japan. He really did shift his life's work to researching and preserving human tattooed skin. Here he is with one of his pieces and he is the founder of the world's only collection of tattoos taken from the dead and he himself had zero tattoos. If you google him there are plenty of photos of his work or his collection. It's a little bit creepy but check them out if you dare if you got it in you. You know, you're not scared. All right, y'all, that is it for today's video. Let me know, of course, how many you got right down below, which ones you thought might have been false, real. And let me know what you think about the actual case. I didn't change any of the details except for the names in these cases today. Um, But yeah, the next one, I'm back in there. One of them is going to be false written by me because I do enjoy creative writing, so... Yeah, that is pretty much it for this video. Please let me know your thoughts down below. Don't forget to like it before you leave. Subscribe if you have not. As always, I appreciate you so much for spending your time with me. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace. Y'all like my little, my little lock puffs. And then they attempt to scar. Ugh, what? To keep his leg. Oh, no. And ultimately, the courts. And ultimately, look. Ugh. And James, uh, yeah, no. Had he made, had he made re, okay, no. Dr. John Boo, mm -mm. different tattoos. Well, please don't die in the middle of me filming. Josh, she down there coughing and hacking. She just wanted me to feel bad for her. You just want mommy to feel bad for you. Hi, pick. Yeah, I'll let you up here and you get to doing too much. Why did you not eat your breakfast? Last but not least, <coughs> I